How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this really satisfying, very beautiful animation with geometry nodes. We're gonna have a lot of fun with some shading, geometry nodes, having some fun with displacement. Uh, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so this is the project file that we will eventually be making. You can go ahead and grab that on Patreon if you are a part of that. That's available in all three tiers. Uh, so let's go ahead and just make a new file and start from scratch. So let's get a plane and that's really all we're gonna need here. And let's hop straight into geometry nodes and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this window right here and click new. So what we're gonna do is get a mesh line. So I'm gonna delete that and we're gonna go ahead and hit search and we're gonna get a mesh line. This is gonna allow us to instance some stuff. So, oops, that's not what I wanted. Mesh line, there we go. Uh, there we go and we have that. We're gonna go ahead, you can see how it's um, poking upwards. We don't want that. And that's gonna be on the Z. So I believe it's the X that we want. Yep, so we're gonna go ahead and animate it here. I mean, give it a, a uh, scale of one here on the X. And there we have it, something pretty cool. Now we have a count of 10, keep that in mind. That's gonna be 10 points that we can instance. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna do instance on points right there, and then I'm gonna go ahead in the mesh primitives and get in a uh, grid. So we'll pull that up there, put that right under there, and we'll put the mesh right into instance, and there we go. So what we're gonna do here now is go ahead and scale these guys out pretty far here on the Y, and then on the, the uh, X, let's just bring it in just a little bit so they're not touching, but they are very, very close. And then I'm gonna go here to the wireframe view, it's right up there, now let's go ahead and subdivide these guys a little bit because we are going to be displacing them and I want them to have very cubic looking um, topology. So in that case, I'm just gonna go ahead and double that a little bit. There we go, pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and play with how where they're positioned. So what we're gonna need is a set position node. So we'll shift A, search, and set position right there. And then we're going to need a random value. So we'll get our random value here and we are going to need a vector. What that's going to allow us to do, very important that we chose vector so we can play with our X, Y, and Z. So let's plug that value right into the offset and it's gonna go crazy. So I'm gonna click and drag and just hit zero on those so that it's not giving me any randomness on um, any other position except for the up and down position. So that's really important to me. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and play with that. And if you don't like the exact ones that are going up and down, you can play with your seed like that and have some fun. So that is pretty much the whole thing. I like the randomness of that one. So we're gonna stick with it and then maybe bring it down a little bit. We just want a subtle amount of scale difference. Now we wanna add a solidify modifier to this, but it won't work until we realize our instance. So let's do realize instances, plug that there. Now we can add modifier. So we're gonna add a solidify. And then we're gonna bring that pretty far down, but actually delete that. We need to just displace this first. So we'll get add modifier and get in a displacement modifier. Click new. I'm gonna click this little button here. And uh, image and movie will go to clouds. So bring your depth all the way down to zero and your scale to three. That's gonna be pretty good. And then we'll go back to this little wrench and play with how much it displaces. So that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add in our solidify. So add, solidify, bring it down like that. And we need to also bevel this. 
So we'll go and get a bevel node, scroll down, and just make your bevel however much you want that to be beveled. And then, of course, this isn't smooth shaded, and we have to do that in geometry nodes. So we have to go back up here, click on the geometry nodes, and type in smooth. And then set shade smooth, boom. Now it is going to be smooth shaded. Now, for animation, if you want to animate this, it's pretty easy. So we'll go and add an empty plane axis. And if you've been following the channel for quite a while, you know what I'm about to do. So we're gonna go ahead and move this empty to the middle of this situation here. And then uh, click on this object, go to the uh, modifiers right over here. And then in the displacement, we're gonna go from local to object. And then right here on object, click empty. And what that's going to do is if I click this little button, I mean, click this, the empty, and I'm gonna hit R twice just to rotate it. Now we animate it. So to actually animate it, you'll pick an axis. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Z axis and we'll animate that in a 360 degree motion. So in your preferences, just make sure that in the animation section, you're at linear, super important. And then I'm gonna give myself 240 frames and then I'm gonna go back to frame zero. So again, make sure your empty is selected. We're gonna click that button right there to add a keyframe, go to the very end and type in 300 and 60, and that's gonna give you a perfect loop. And then there we go. Um, we're at 12 frames a second. It's working really, really slowly. So what I'm gonna do here is in the uh, modifiers, I'm just gonna click this little computer button and that's gonna disable the bevel so we can actually see this, how it animates in real time. And then because I'm seeing that, I do wanna make my displacement strength a bit stronger. There we go. So there you go. That is kind of the satisfying aspect of this animation, just kind of moves around very slowly, very smoothly. The more frames, the slower, the less frames, the quicker. So this is all you really need to know to animate this. Let's go back to geometry notes. Now that I'm looking at it, there's some things I wanna change. So here in the grid, we wanna make these guys a lot longer. And then here in the count, I'm gonna add quite a few more to the count. And in that case, what you're gonna to wanna to do is move this empty to the middle it's gonna give you a difference in speed wherever the empty is placed. So you want that empty to be in the middle of your scene. And then again, we can go back here to the bevel and see how that looks with the bevel. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and add a camera and light this thing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit Shift A, get a camera, and I'm gonna just kind of position it like this. I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero. And then in my camera settings, I'm gonna go from perspective to orthographic. I love orthographic uh, camera views. It's really fun. It has just a very unique look to it. And that's why I like it. And this is kind of the view we're gonna be getting as we're working. So first thing I actually wanna do is shade it, then we'll light it because the shading is gonna affect the lighting. So we'll go here to the shading tab and keep in mind, this shading we're about to do is only done in cycles. If you don't wanna use cycles, then just add any material you want to the whole thing. But I'm adding a very specific type of shading here because we're using geometry nodes, things need to be recognized as different planes. Um, that'll make sense once we actually use the uh, node. But otherwise, just go ahead and pick a random uh, material and I'll show you how to apply it in geometry nodes. So right now we don't have any lighting, so we're gonna hit this drop down menu and kind of use Blender's default lighting for this whole thing. So I'm gonna click on the object, I'm gonna click new, and I'll call this random. Now let's go back to geometry nodes really quick. And um, we do need to go ahead and apply that material. So we'll get a set material node. So we'll get a set material node right here, and then we'll pick the random node that we just made. And then we'll go back to shading so we can actually start working. So here in this scene, let's go ahead and make two different materials and then we'll combine them together. So the first one is gonna be kind of a cement or asphalt material, very simple. Get a color ramp, get a noise texture, and then we'll get a texture coordinate, hitting Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So we'll get the object coordinate here. And then let's plug the noise texture into the color ramp and the color into the roughness. So now we have this plugged into the roughness. I'm gonna go ahead and make the base color dark gray. And then here in the detail, make that 12 and a roughness here, 
right about there. And in fact, we're not gonna plug this into the roughness. We're gonna get a bump node. So B U M, we're gonna get a bump node. I was a little confused. I'm gonna highlight these guys and hit G to move it down. So let's plug this bump node into the normal and to and the color into the height. And this part you actually can see in Eevee. So I'm gonna bring my distance to 0.1 and then bring my strength down a little bit. And actually bring the strength up so you can see it better. So let's bring this here. Maybe bring this back and do this. So something like that may bring our roughness up. Then bring the scale up like that. All right, so here we go. And then we'll bring the strength down a little bit. And we pretty much have the material. And to add more color, I'm gonna go ahead and get a color ramp. And then we're gonna get a noise texture into that color ramp and plug the color ramp into our base color. And then we'll just kind of play with this. Let's make this white portion back to the dark gray we had. And then we'll go back to cycles here. Let me bring this up a little bit. And then we'll have this one meet that base gray just a little bit. So now we can kind of make out that color there. Second material we're gonna make, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this principled and then plug it into the surface here. And then let's make it uh, just a random color, maybe orange. And then make it very bright orange and make that fairly reflective. That's all we're gonna need to do for there. Now, here comes the part that's only compatible with cycles. So we're gonna get in a mix shader. And then we'll plug the principle here. And we want um, Blender to recognize these individual planes. So let's get a color ramp and a noise texture. And let's get in a mapping. And last thing we're gonna need is a geometry. A geometry node. So let's plug random per island, which is going to, this random per island socket's gonna recognize these individual planes because they're islands. Um, and we'll plug the mapping into the vector, into the factor, the noise texture, and then we'll go here to constant to give us more accurate um, placement. And we'll plug that there, and boom. Now we can play with these uh, selections. So we'll do something like that. And you can also play with your scale to kind of mess with it more. But again, it's only possible in cycles for the time being. Uh, we'll, we'll see maybe in future updates, but it, this is a cycles feature, unfortunately. So there we go. Now we have these random pieces going around. Let's go ahead and light this and we'll be done. So there's no lighting. So click on your world on color and click on sky texture. So let's go ahead and bring that sun intensity just a little bit, I'm at 0 0.1. And then here on air, bring that to zero. Bring your sun elevation down to be something like this. Now we get this kind of really beautiful silver looking lighting. And then we can bring the sun size up a little bit to get much softer lighting. And then you can just go ahead and rotate your sun to get the uh, whatever lighting you're looking for for your scene. And then you can maybe bring that sun that sun strength up a little bit more. But this gives you this very, very unique looking lighting, um, having that low sun elevation with your scene. And then again, rotate your sun around till you get the lighting that you're looking for for your particular scene. This looks good for me. And then maybe bring that sun elevation down a little bit. And then let's just see how this looks when we render it out. And look at that. And look at that, we get this just very interesting, very soft, easy to look at, beautiful, I say it's satisfying, especially when you're working with it, kind of lighting. I love it, it's nice. Of course, the satisfying part is all subjective, um, but this is how I make it. Let's go back to geometry nodes and edit these um, pieces just a little bit more. So let's go ahead on the grid and make it a little bit longer because I was seeing the edge there. And that's pretty much it, we're done. So you can go ahead and add more color to it, more lighting, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, we're done, it's rendered. It's also animating very slowly until you turn off that bevel. But this is our piece. So let's just go ahead and pick a random frame and see how that lighting affects it. So the lighting will affect each frame very differently. And it's really fun to look at like that. 
Um, so with that being said, that's it. Go ahead and render it out. Um, my render settings are going to be 300 samples. My light paths are everything is uh, at one. Turn off reflective and reflective caustics here on your light paths. And then of course, keep it at a PNG sequence because you never know when something will crash. Um, so there you go. That is how that's done. Oh, and my cat has appeared from her nap. So there he is. Well, there she is. Just called her a man. Um, so there you go. That is the end of the tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Again, real-time materials, you can check that out in the description, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.